works. It's been pretty exciting. Very exciting. So, so, so what's going on? Like, what's like we, you know, we do on YouTube here on YouTube and other places we, we show videos on the sun and people are really interested in the flares. And so what's going on that there's all this action on the sun? Can you tell us why? Why is 2024 such a big year for the sun? Yeah, so the sun has a, an activity cycle. We call it the solar cycle or the sunspot cycle. And that cycle goes from very low sunspots to none up to high, back down to low. And that up, down, uh, up and down takes about 11 years. So that is the length of the solar cycle. Well, it turns out that right now we are just about at the peak. So we are basically entering what we call solar maximum. And solar maximum means lots of sunspots, larger, more complicated sunspots, and more solar flares. And so I heard originally that solar maximum was expected in 2025. Is it still expected in 2025? It has, um, that was the original estimate. So NASA and NOAA get together um, at the beginning of every solar cycle to make a prediction. And 2019 was the prediction for this current cycle, which we call cycle 25. And the prediction was that it would be into 2025 that the cycle would reach its peak. And it has been peaking much earlier and there have been updated estimates. We now believe that the sun will peak its activity over actually the next year. So 2024 is really going to be the peak of solar maximum, not 2025. So it's coming a little earlier. So that 11 year cycle is not super precise like a clock, right? Um, it's exactly, it, it, it varies. There can be ones that are a little bit shorter, ones that are a little bit longer, but also ones that are a little bit uh, taller that is more active or less active. So not only is it the length, but it's how high the activity is. And so the last cycle, cycle 24, wasn't a very active cycle from what I understand. Is that right? So, yeah, cycle 24 was in fact the smallest cycle in 100 years. The last cycle that was comparable to that was in the early 1900s. And that is what the prediction was for this cycle, that it would be roughly the same. And that is not what's happened. We've seen this cycle to be much larger than the expected cycle, much larger than last cycle. So that's made things very exciting. It has been exciting, like especially this year, because you know, you and I work together on a daily post at earthsky.org where we present the sun news. So Alex and I are up in the morning together online at 4 or 5 a.m. every day, along with a whole crew of people who are working to get the news out at Earth Sky every morning. And wow, this year, it's just been so much fun. We had that, uh, that big sunspot in February that produced the largest X-flare of solar cycle 25 so far. Can you tell us about that one? Yeah. So. Uh... One of the things is the way we measure solar flares is, is kind of like how we measure earthquakes. So earthquakes have a scale that's that's called a logarithmic scale. What that means is that it's it's it goes up in, in groups of 10. So like a one and then a two is 10 times bigger than one and three is 10 times bigger than two. And so the same sort of thing happens with solar flares. We label them with letters. So there's A, B, C, M and X, and each letter is 10 times bigger. So uh, an M1 is 10 times bigger than a C1. And then we put numbers in front of that. So C1234 up to C9, and then we go to M. So that's what's been happening is we've been seeing a lot more of the M flares, which is medium sized flares, and then in February, we had a very large sunspot that had a lot of energy, and it produced an X6 flare. So that would be 60 times bigger than a C than an M1. So M, X, and then six. It's six times, so it's 60. Um, so, so a really gigantic solar flare. And what was that sunspot region? It was. That, 
I, AR I, 3590, I think it was. I think it was 3550 or 3650. Oh, okay. We don't know that. We don't. Yeah, well, we have to go back and look. I have to go back and look because right now, the, yeah. biggest, the biggest sunspots uh, that we have, sunspot region is 3663 and 3664. Right. And so while I have you on the subject of X flares, we have a question. Uh, this question came in from Sweet Aloha on YouTube. And Sweet Aloha is asking, why aren't there more public notifications about the solar flares and their effects, especially on the human heart, psyche, and energy levels? Well, there are public notifications. Now, there are, there are not as public as, as people might, uh, might wish. And that's actually one of the things that, that I feel like Earth Sky is actually serving is to provide this because the, the main audience for solar flares are industry audiences like um, the uh, radio operators or uh, astronauts, airlines. These are the areas where we know there are direct effects from solar flares on those particular areas. Um, but what we've done is we've done a lot of research and so far we have found no indication that solar flares have a direct impact on you and I, on, a, on our health, on our physical health, because well, the main reason being that the radiation that comes from solar flares, mostly ultraviolet and x-rays, do not make it through, does not make it through the atmosphere, which is a good thing. The atmosphere is very thick it protects us. Um, the things that are impacted are things above the atmosphere, technology like satellites, or even the atmosphere itself does in fact transmit radio waves and those can be impacted. So to say that there is no effect, well, we can't really say that. We don't really know for 100%, but we've done research. We've looked for any kinds of effects and so far we have not found any. Right. And so uh, so what you were saying was that the the radiation from the X flares or any of the solar flares aren't penetrating Earth's atmosphere. And that's why you said originally that certain uh, industries such as, you know, radio propagation of radio waves or astronauts in space or high flying aircraft might be affected, but that we on our surface are, are there's no evidence. We don't know. The reality is that we don't know, but at this point, there are no scientific studies showing that there are effects to the human heart or effects to the human psyche or energy levels. We don't know that. Right, right. And science just people, science hasn't been able to find right. A, science a hasn't connection. been able to find it. They've certainly been looking. I mean, now we do know that certain types of the radiation do not make it through. Now, now right. could there be effects that we don't know about or something we don't know about? Sure. But x-rays, for example, the same type of uh, light that we have in x-rays that allow us to see inside of our bodies, those are penetrating, but they cannot penetrate the atmosphere. The atmosphere is too thick. Um, right. And if they could penetrate the atmosphere, we wouldn't be here at all. Right. Exactly. <laughs> That's exactly the case. I mean, it's not a coincidence that only certain types of light make it through the atmosphere, the kind right. of light that we can see, the kind of light that supports our life, the kind of uh, light that provides heat and energy for us. But the other kinds of light that are harmful to us do not make it through. Otherwise, we would not be here today. Right. I, but, you know, I will say we do get a lot of uh, messages from people who feel that they are being affected by solar flares. So that would be, you know, for scientists of the future, maybe that's something that will be studied and some something will be found or Absolutely. who knows? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And we do know that um, there is solar activity that does impact certain animals. I mean, we do know that. Um, in particular, not solar flares necessarily, but there are other types of explosions that send big blobs of solar material, solar stuff. We call them coronal mass ejections. They hit the Earth and they jostle the Earth's magnetic field and disturb it. And when those disturbances in the magnetic field happen, 
there are certain types of birds that use magnetic field, the Earth's magnetic fields for navigation that are impacted by it. Uh, other types of animals, insects, there's been even evidence that some marine animals um, could be impacted by what we call geomagnetic storms. Earth, geo being Earth and magnetic, so changes in Earth's magnetic field due to activity from the sun. So that's a, that would be an interesting kind of a self-test for someone if they felt that, because it takes a while for those coronal mass ejections to get to Earth, right? It takes mm -hmm. several days. So if an X flare occurred and a big coronal mass ejection went out from the sun and someone felt that day that they were having an effect from the X flare, then we know that that effect is not coming from the coronal mass ejection because it's going to take several more days to get there. That's right. That's right. Yeah. yeah. And so it, it's difficult because this is one of the things that makes studying medicine and, and areas of medicine so difficult is that there are so many things that impact us um, and timing. It's very difficult to, you know, filter out all the different things that are happening. Like, you know, just like, being here in this in the time when there are changes in the weather you know it, it does impact people with migraines for example pressure changes um also things like pollen and stuff like that so if those things happen at the same time as solar activity which one is causing it that's a you know that's a challenge for you know medicine to be able to make those kinds of studies right so that's something for us to look forward to in the 21st century um, so what can we expect, <clears throat> excuse me, what can we expect, Alex, for the rest of 2024, flare-wise and solar activity-wise? Well, we're going to see, uh, one thing to note is that the, the solar activity comes in little spurts. So the, there'll be more sunspots, larger sunspots, and the, the time between those peaks in, in sunspots will decrease. So we'll start to see more bigger, you know, in, in increasingly bigger ones. Um, and that means that we'll see more releases of energy in the form of solar flares and they, in the form of these coronal mass ejections that are pushing things out. Um, the thing to think about is these giant sunspots are actually kind of like a rubber band. So you take a rubber band and you twist it, twist it, twist it, it knots up. And eventually it knots up enough, it's gonna snap. Well, the same thing happens with these magnetic fields, which are in the sunspots. They get twisted on the sun. Eventually, they build up energy. The, the more energy, the bigger the sunspot, the more complicated it is. And eventually, that energy has to go somewhere. That's why we have solar flares and coronal mass ejections. And we will start to see more of them. That means that we will see more impacts on communications, um, but we'll also, for example, when we have more coronal mass ejections, those can create more auroral displays, aurora, the northern and southern lights. So we should see more of those. That, all, that means that 2024, 2025, maybe even 2026 is going to be a great time to go to Alaska or, you know, New Zealand to look for aurora. Absolutely. And, you know, I feel like we're seeing that now this year. I feel like we're seeing that more flares, bigger flares, shorter time between flares. That's already happening. And, you know, I want to mention again that we're that Alex and I work on a, a daily Sun News post that comes out uh, in the morning every day and come to EarthSky.org and you can follow along because it's pretty exciting. So, Alex, thank you for being with us today. Thank you for having me. Okay, we'll have you on again. Talk about talk about other cool sun stuff. Oh, and I just want to say that you know people are so worried about the sun stuff because they're they're scared of the flares and so on. But it's just our star, right? It's just our star doing its right. star thing. It's been doing it for billions of years. It's going to keep doing it. Right, right. Okay, thank you, Alex. Bye bye. Thanks for having me.